break up a little bit. Add a little bit of light just now. And it's nothing to turn. Look good better as well. Having light, um, having light on the kitchen. The north of night time. was a man that lived out in Ballamacoda uh, as, I was, as I was a young lad growing up. Um, Jack Welch was his name but he was known by, as Big Jack by everybody and he was a highly intellectual fella. He was sort of self-thought and um, was a great man to recite poetry or uh, various speeches or things like that and sometimes when we go from a pub at night and he'd stand in the middle of the cross road that I have Iron Cross and then give the Emmett speech from the dock or, or, or the um, Gettysburg Address or something like that to the moon and to the stars. And he was a good man to write poetry himself as well, or little poems anyway, and he had a very good sense of humour. And I often spoke to him about um, how frugal things were in the war years when I was going up to the 1940s. And he said, I wished it was nothing at all like what he had to go through when he was a young fellow himself growing up. And he said, back in the early 1900s, he said, that was the time when, of course, everybody in rural Ireland made their own, grew their own vegetables for the table. And not only that, they also produced their own meat for the table. And when, for example, they'd have fattened a little pig out in the back, when the pig would be killed, they'd have to salt it to preserve the meat, because, of course, there was no refrigeration. So any meat for the table had to be salted. And Jack wrote, wrote this tongue-in-cheek poem, about the frugal times when he grew up. A time, he said, when there was no such thing as waste and everything, and he meant everything, was recycled. And the little poem he called it The Salt, and it goes like this. When I was a hearty young fella, and my age was about 17, I hired myself to a farmer at the horse fair at Bell and the Screen. Now the farm was way out in the mountain, set in its heather and bog. And the stock that I to look after was a donkey, a goat, and a dog. The farmer and me and his mother all lived in this tumble down shack. The mother, she was well over ninety, her bones were beginning to crack. She slept on a chair by the fireside and never would go to her bed. And when I'd get up every morning, she'd be sitting there nodding her head. No, he had three old hens and a rooster. One day, they all died of the croup. So I plucked them and boiled them and salted them. <laughs> we lived for a week in the soup. And then, Neddy the donkey broke a hind leg and suffered great pain. So I shot it and skinned it and cleaned it and sent me for the salt once again. Misfortunes never come singly. Soon after, the nanny got died. So I skinned it and cleaned it and salted it. He made himself shoes at the hide. You know, I thought that maybe his mind was affected or that he was going insane. For when poor Fido died of distemper, he sent me for the salt once again. As I thought of what happened to Fido, I couldn't see a wink all that night. But when I got up the next morning, I got a more horrible fright. The old woman was lying dead in the corner. As I made for the door, he cried, Halt! Oh, where are you going so early? Come back here and fetch me the salt. No, that's a recycling. 